ourselves to you today. Have your way. Have your will in this house. We worship you, Jesus. Can we give God praise? He's worthy today. I hope you have come for him. Amen. Worship with the choir. Amen. 
I was perusing through the New Testament this week. Mark chapter 7 just sort of stood out to me. Starting verse 31, it says, Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidium to the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his finger into his ears. And after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephpatha, that is be opened. And his ears were open, his tongue was released, and he, be, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Here's, what, here's three things that really captured me in those scriptures. One, he pulled them away privately. When they said and they came to him and they begged him, would you please touch this man? He's deaf. He has a speech impediment. He needs you to touch him. He said, come on, we're going to come over to the side with you. We're going to do this privately. We're going to do this together. When he pulled him away privately, the manner of which he touched the man. Now listen to this. This is what he did. He put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. How many of us would come to the altar if you knew that was the way it was going to happen? If we really need a touch from God, we're going to say, God, however you want to touch me, however you want to do it, Lord, I'm yours. But here's what captures me even more. After the man was healed, Jesus says, I don't want you to tell anybody. I don't want you to say anything. And the more emphatically he said, don't tell anybody, the more they praised and the more they rejoiced and the more they told about what Jesus had done in their life. When is the last time we said something and told somebody about what God has done in our life? When? When is the last time God's done something for us instead of sitting down and not saying anything, we proclaimed it? We lifted his name. We praised him. We glorified him. Because how else are people going to know about our great God? Unless we proclaim it. Unless we tell it. Unless we share it. So if God's done something for you this week, this is what I'm challenging you. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Don't be quiet about it. Be loud about it. Be extravagant about it. And tell them what God's done in your life. Because I'm sitting amongst the people that's been saved. I'm sitting amongst the people that's been sanctified. I'm sitting amongst the people that's been filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm sitting amongst the people that's been healed of infirmities. I'm sitting amongst the people that's had their families put back together. And we ought to tell it. I want you to stand with me. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. But here's the last thing I want you to know about this. They went around and they said, he does all things well. Whatever you need this morning, he does all things well. He heals. I have to, I have to share this. I have to share this. I'm sorry. I just caught eye contact with somebody that shared a testimony with me. There was a three-year-old little boy that was on our prayer list. He was going to have to go in to have open heart surgery. And the Monday of the surgery, the doctor came out and said, mm, it opened up on its own. Yeah. See, I serve a God that not only heals bodies, he heals minds, he heals spirits, he heals families. He heals relationships because my God does all things well. If, <laughs> if 
you're in this sanctuary this morning and you have a need from God, I just want you to lift your hand. I have a need from God. I'm here to tell you as we go to his name in prayer, he does all things well. Father, we come before you today. We love you. Lord, we thank you for the word that we can glean on. We thank you for the word that we can read about the, the, the works of Jesus. Lord, the works of men and women of God. But Lord, we can learn how to live through the word of God. Lord, we thank you for that word that speaks to us daily. We thank you for that word that becomes alive and rich in our lives. Lord, in this particular story, Lord, you healed a man. And you told them not to tell anybody. But Lord, the more you told them not to, the more, the more they wanted to proclaim it. The more they wanted to tell. The more they wanted to shout. And Lord, their, toast, their testimony was that you do all things well. You do all things well. Lord, we know you reign in all the earth. But Lord, this morning, I think we ought to proclaim what God's done in our life. That we ought to lift up the name of Jesus and tell somebody what God has done in our life. We need to share with somebody that God saved me. We need to share with somebody I've been sanctified. We need to share with somebody I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to share with somebody we've been healed. We need to proclaim the testimony of what God's done in our life. And Lord, I come before you this morning. And I lift this congregation up to you. Every need that is in this house, I lift to you. Father, you've seen each hand that was lifted. Lord, you know the physical need. You know the financial need. You know the spiritual need. Lord, you know each and every need that was represented by the hand that was lifted. And Lord, I pray right now that you would reach down and that you would meet the need of your people. Lord, because when we leave this place, we're not going to remain silent. But we're going to proclaim what you've done in our lives. Lord, because I believe what they declared in the word that you do all things well. <laughs> Lord, whatever the needs are in this congregation. Lord, even the ones that didn't raise their hand, but their heart is beating inside of their chest. Lord, they, they can't seem to put their finger on it but Lord you're convicting them Lord you're, you're even speaking to them right now and you're telling them I do all things well just put it in my hands just let me handle it Lord I pray that you would touch the remainder of this service I pray that you would be glorified I pray that your will would be done here today let revival burn in our souls. Lord, let a passion burn for you. Lord, I pray these things in that name that's above all names. <laughs> that name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. There's such a sweet presence of God in this place today. If you're visiting with us this morning, maybe this is your first service with us or you haven't been with us in a while, can you just lift your hand? We have some information we'd like to get to you about our church. Anybody visiting with us this morning? We have a couple right over here that Brother Terry will be introducing a little bit later. So good to have you this morning in the house of God. Can we take just a moment or two to fellowship together?
good to see you today. Hope you are doing well. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I think some people stayed home today. They thought it was freezing rain outside. We listen to the weathermen, don't we? I feel, I'm, I'm sorry about Wednesday night. You know, you, you hear about all the inches of snow. I was done getting ready for snow cream and everything. I didn't get nothing but water. That's all I got. I could have got that out of spigot. But, uh, but we wanted to make sure you were safe. That's our main concern. And please understand, anytime we cancel church for something like that, it's because we have your best interest in mind. It's not because we don't want to have church. It's not because we don't love to worship. It's not because we don't love studying and giving the word of God. It's because we don't want you to take a chance and, and, and get hurt. That would bother us. So please understand it's always for your best interest that we do those things. But I'm glad you're here today. And uh, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to worship the Lord together. All of you, whether you are uh, our guest just because you've been invited or you came by or you're here for a special reason, we want all of you to know and understand how thankful we are that you have come to share with us today. We don't take it lightly. We are so thankful that you've come to be our guest today. And among our guests are Rob and Karen McElye. Did I get it right? McElye. Uh, they're in the internship program. Today is one of those uh, visiting days. And they are with us. They're members at Pelzer Church of God. They're doing an internship at Dacusville at the Life Church with Pastor Chad Albertson. And they're visiting with us today. Would you just give them a Woodruff welcome and let them know that we're honored to have them with us today? Amen. You want to stand up where they can see you better? All right. Uh, an enjoyable time uh, talking with them during Sunday school and and we're going to do lunch together and talk a little more. And, uh, but they're very, very nice people. He's a retired military man. Some of y'all will appreciate that. Um, just uh, wonderful people. Yeah. And uh, we're just blessed to have them today. And we're blessed to have you. And we were praying today. I hope you noticed on the, the prayer list there that we've had some people that uh, have lost loved ones this week. We want to continue to pray for them. Um, today, the funeral... Uh, of Bud Roddy's stepmother, Judy Roddy, will be at West End Baptist at 3 o'clock. Three o'clock. So we're praying for uh, Bud and his family. Also, Miss Ruth Honeycutt, she's a newer member of our church. Uh, her sister passed away in North Carolina. They've already uh, did a private service there. And also the family of Tina Simmons, they did a private ceremony uh, there in the, at the graveside. So all these families still need you to lift them up in prayer, and I want you to continue to, to do that as we pray together. If you have not yet filled out your fasting card, today at midnight marks our second week. We have one week left in our 21-day fast. And so if you have not yet put down that, we'd love to have it up here. We're going to collect these after prayer meeting tomorrow night. We just want to know what everybody is doing. Again, your name is not on here, and it's really not even what you're doing as a fast. It is what you're fasting for. That's what we want to join you in prayer about, that we're praying for something. We're asking God to do something. And on there is revival. It's the very first thing we're all fasting and praying for. We'd love for you to join with us in that. So I hope that you will uh, do that if you have not already placed your card up here. Our wrestlers are going to come and wait on us this morning. What a great opportunity for us to worship the Lord and bless Him today. I hope and pray that you will join us. As we give our tithe to the Lord, that's what belongs to Him. And then beyond that, we give other gifts. They could be designated gifts. There's some listed on the, on the card there. Or you can give other gifts as well just by dropping the money in the plate. It goes to our general fund. However you choose to do that, it is a blessing. First of all, to God, it's a blessing to you. And lastly, it's a blessing to the church. And we're grateful for all that you do. Are you ready to join us in giving today? Father God, we thank you. For all that you do for us, we can never thank you enough. We can never praise you enough. Lord, just receive today. as We honor you and bless you in giving our gifts to you today. I pray that you'll receive them, multiply them, make them everything they need to be. And we'll give you honor, praise, and glory for all you do. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen.
aren't you so grateful that he's faithful? Can we just stand up and thank him for being faithful to keep his word to us? Faithful to keep every promise that he has ever given? Let's ask him to come on down today and fill us again with the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. said, how many of you would be all, it'd be all right with you? The Holy Ghost came down today. Hallelujah. Father God, send him on down in power, in fullness, with all that he is. Let him come in this place today. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. All of God's people said, amen. You can be seated if you can. I want to read this morning from Acts chapter 3. And if you are a note taker, you may notice that about four or five years ago, I preached from this particular passage of scripture. Matter of fact, when I was preparing the message, I kept thinking, this sounds familiar. This sounds familiar and I started going back and looking and uh, I, I was preparing pretty much the same message I did about four or five years ago. David in the Lord has something that he wants us to know. I've been thinking about this thing of, of revival and, and trying to do my best to do my part as, as a pastor to make sure we are ready when an evangelist gets here to, to bring the word to us that we can already be in mind, in spirit, in body, uh, prepared for what God wants to do for us. One of the things that I've mentioned repeatedly is that I believe that when revival does come, it will be a revival of the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost now more than we've ever needed Him. We need Him in every regard. We need, we need Him not, not, just, not just to show up in a gift or two. We need Him in fullness and in totality. We, we need Him not only in the operation of the gifts, and we need them. We need Him in, in the fruit that comes from the Holy Ghost. 
We need him to help us in ministry. We need him to direct us, to lead us, to teach us. All of the dynamics and all of the things that the Holy Ghost is, we, we need a resurgence, a renewal, a refilling, a, 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 a revival of the Spirit. Hello? This is what we need. And as I'm reading in Acts chapter 3, there's one word that stuck out to me four or five years ago. It stuck out to me again as I'm, as I'm studying again. And I'll get to it in a moment. This is what the text says. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And as he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, Peter and John were doing what they normally did. That was going to the house of God, they were going to go through the gate into the temple and they went to worship and this, this, this man who was begging was doing what he normally did. He went to the place where the most foot traffic was going to be and he was sitting at the place he's accustomed to being and, and he was doing what he was used to doing and that was asking for alms, silver and gold. He wanted something of temporal means. This particular day, there were several things that happened differently. First of all, something differently happened to Peter and John because something was different about them. Acts chapter 3 finds a Peter and John that have had something to happen to them that occurred in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says, on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, that, that this, this phenomenal thing happened. In that upper room, the baptism of the Spirit came to those believers that were in the upper room. And it drove them out of the upper room and it drove them to the streets. And because of what had happened to them in that upper room, they are not the same. How many believes that if Jesus comes in your life, you are not the same? How many believes even the baptism of the Holy Ghost adds something to you that you are not the same? You're different. I don't have time to tell you my story about getting cramps in my cheeks. Uh, but I'll tell you that sometime. If you want to know, you talk to him and I'll tell you. It, it makes you different. It adds something to your life. And so here are Peter and John. They're going to the temple. And they're going with something having happened to them differently than maybe the last time they walked by this same man who was there. This man's doing what he always does. I want something. Give me something temporal. Give me something that will help me right now. Give me something that will fix my problem right now. The problem was what they were asking for Peter and John, Peter and John didn't have. Peter and John said, what you're asking me for, I don't have. But I just happen to have something else. What I have... I give to you. Now the word I got interested in is this word have. This word have in the Greek is the word E-C-H-O. We would say it echo. In other words, it appears that, that he got, Peter and John got something from somewhere that came to them. And now he's saying what has come to us, we're willing to give it to you. What I do have, I'm willing to give to you. This word literally means to have in the hand in the sense of wearing. It's used of those that are joined to anyone by the bonds of natural family or marriage or friendship. Now Peter was married to a wife, but something had happened to him greater 
than marrying his wife. He had become married to Christ. And even greater than that, to be married, you've got to have an authority and a power who is the one that joins you together. Now on the day of Pentecost, that authority and that power came to Peter. He not only is married to Christ, but the authority, the power of the Holy Ghost was the one that joined them together. And what Peter is saying, you're asking for something to help you today, but what I have can help you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Silver and gold will run out, but the power of the Holy Ghost will not run out. What I have, I'm willing to let it bounce off of me and come to you. I want to know today, do we have enough of the Holy Ghost in us that he can bounce off us into someone else, onto someone else, to affect someone else? else do we have enough of Jesus that we can allow the Holy Ghost in us and the Jesus in us to affect those that we come in contact with do you understand that sometimes the easiest thing to do is to give somebody a coin there you go this is what you're asking for you understand the reason sometimes it's easier to give a coin is because we can give it and go our way and we're no longer responsible. But when you give somebody Jesus, sometimes they got questions along the way. What do you do about this? And what do you do about that? And is this okay? And is that okay? And sometimes the reason why we don't offer them Jesus is because we, we're too busy to have to try to deal with their questions. Peter said, listen, what I want you to know is you're wanting silver and gold, but i got something better than that. I've got something that can absolutely change and revolutionize your life. I've got something that if you let it bounce off of me onto you, can absolutely change you and make you something you never thought would ever be possible for you. What Peter and John had was power enough that it can make a crippled man get up and walk see all the cripple man wanted was some silver and gold but Peter was looking beyond what silver and gold can do Peter and John were looking that cripple men and women can walk and lame people can get up and bound people can be free and sinner people can be set free and no longer be bound by sin. They were looking at what Jesus can do and the power of the Holy Ghost can do. Where are we looking today? Where are we looking? Are we looking to quickly pass them off? Are we looking beyond their crippledness? Are we looking beyond their boundness? Are we looking beyond their sickness and understanding that the power of the Holy Ghost still has the power to lift up those that are down? There's still power in the name of Jesus. There is still power in the working of the Holy Ghost. Got to understand, Pentecost changed Peter. Peter was a man who said he loved Jesus. But when, but before the cock crowed, he had denied him three times. He declared to Jesus he wouldn't do it. He declared he loved Jesus. But when people ask him, aren't you one of the followers? Peter said, no, I don't know him. And the Lord declares that he even cursed. Peter said he loved Jesus, but he was up and down, even in that upper room when Jesus said, I need to wash your feet. And Peter said, Lord, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you don't belong to me. You have no part of me. And then Peter changed his mind. Then wash my whole body. Peter was all over the place. But Pentecost did something. Pentecost changed Peter. On the day of Pentecost, after the Holy Ghost came and he was filled with the Holy Ghost and it drove them out of that upper room, you find Peter not trying to hide from people and distancing himself from people, but he stood up and boldly declared the word of truth and preached a gospel message and people came to Jesus. 
telling you the Holy Ghost makes the difference. So here, why are you talking about the Holy Ghost? I want to tell you why. Because if the Holy Ghost can take somebody who's up and down and all over the map and make them to be straight, that's what we need. We got people who claim Jesus, but they're all over the map. Some of them are just learning to walk, and we understand that. Some of them have served the Lord for long enough they ought to be farther along than they are right now. But I tell you what will make the difference. When you get a hold of what Peter had, when you get a hold of what John had, when you get a hold of what Grandmom and Granddaddy had, when you get in the upper room and the Holy Ghost fills you, it will make a difference. It will make a difference. After Peter had denied the Lord, Peter was broken. He wished he could turn back the hands of time. He wished he could do things differently. You know what? Peter's a lot like us. All of us have made decisions that if we could go back and do it again, we would do it again, right? We've made choices. And if we could go back and we could do it all over again, we would never do that. We would never, we would never, we would never let ourselves go there. But aren't you glad for the mercy of Jesus? Jesus shows up in, in the latter part of John. And they're out there fishing because they can't get their mind off the fact that Jesus has died and, and Peter's still feeling the ramifications for denying Jesus and, 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 and he just can't seem to get over it. And Jesus is on the shore cooking. I mean, likes a Savior that can cook. Peter recognizes who he was. He just simply grabs his fishing coat and he jumps out and he swims to shore. And Jesus and Peter have a conversation. Jesus asked him a very important question. Peter, do you, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you, you've asked me that already and I've told you that I love you. Then what I want you to do, Peter, is feed my lambs. Why did he ask him three times? Because Peter denied him three times. Aren't you glad? A merciful Savior. We may make bad choices and we make bad decisions. But God in His mercy and His wisdom understands that if we'll hold on to Him, if we'll allow Him to put things in us that can echo off of us and bless other people, that somehow their lives can be different. You could be here this morning. You made a bad choice. I saw someone on Facebook yesterday was talking about a class they attended at the MIP and it was about getting over hurts and being forgiven and those kind of things and I thought you know there's some people that really could use a class like that because we've all been hurt we've all made choices I don't even know I'm not I'm not even on my I don't even know where I'm We've all had issues in our life. And sometimes the enemy of our soul tries to convince us that we've gone too far and we've done too much. But I want to tell you, Jesus, if he has to cook on the shore of your life to get your attention, he'll camp out. He'll do whatever he has to do to get you to understand how much he loves you. Then he took this same Peter who had denied Jesus, was struggling with what he had done, told him he loved him, gave him a job to do, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And then he wanted to know, I'm not asking you to do it in the strength you've already had because you haven't done well enough. So what I'm going to do is put something in you 
that will so authorize you, so empower you, so direct you, so help you that you won't have to cower down anymore. You won't have to hide behind people anymore. You won't have to deny me anymore. You'll stand up with your shoulders squared and you will announce who I am and you will begin to, 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 to feed my lambs. We see it. Acts chapter 2, Peter comes out empowered by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He is not denying Jesus. He literally knows that it's very possible that he could have to give his life and be crucified for standing up and declaring Jesus, but he doesn't care. 3,000 sheep were fed that came to Christ Jesus. Now this same Peter who has this same power is standing in front of a lame man. And I've told you this before. Sometimes people are so used to being lame they don't want to be healed. Because it's the only life they know. I want to tell you, just because it's the only life you know doesn't mean there's not a better life. Some of us are carrying around the weight of our sin. Some of us are carrying around the weight of our past. Some of us are carrying around the weight of hurtful words, our past decisions, and we won't let them go. And we're, we're just figuring out this is just the way my life is supposed to be. The lame man didn't ask for Peter and John to heal him. He just said, give me some gold, silver, so I can buy me some food. Peter and John said, I got something better. I'm going to get you out of your lameness. I'm going to release you from that, that infirmity that has bound you. And I'm going to set you free. What I have is going to often echo off of me. It's like a radar bouncing off of me. What's in me is going to come to you. When's the last time we walked up to anybody and said, I know if we did that, they'd look at us funny. How many of you have ever been, you've come in contact with somebody, hospital, in their home, and inside of you, the Holy Ghost jumps up inside of you, almost as if you're swelling up on the inside, and it's like if you don't hurry up and get over there and lay your hands on them, you're going to pop. Let me see your hands. Come on, anybody? You know what that is? That's what's in you is wanting to come out of you and be used. This is what the Holy Ghost is for. It's put inside of you not to be a display piece. It's put inside of you so that you can be empowered to do the work that God has asked you to do. Why could Peter stand up and preach to thousands? Because God had already told him what he wanted him to do. Then God empowered him with the gift to do it. And he stood up. In full power of the Holy Ghost, declared the word, and souls came to Jesus. Y'all, excuse me for being out of breath. I've laid around like a bag of trash for three days. <laughs> this is the most exercise I've had in three days. Do you love me? What if Jesus were to ask us that question in reference to why we have not yet sought for the baptism of His Spirit? What if Jesus were to ask us that question for those that may have been filled with the Spirit of God as to why we have not let what's in us echo off of? Well, do you love me? Of course I do. Then why are you not letting what I put in you bounce off of you to others? Why are you hoarding what I have given you when what I really want you to do is take what I have given you and give it away? Peter even quoted the prophet Joel. He said, what you see in is what Joel said. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And in the latter day, he talked about old men and young men, handmaidens and servants. How he would pour out his flesh on his spirit on all flesh. I want what God wants. Now, if you were to ask me about something physical, what kind of car do you want? What kind of, what kind of chair do you want? What kind of, you know, I'd give you my opinion. But what I want spiritually, I want what God wants. Do you remember on March the 1st, 1997? In this room, on a Saturday night, after a group had spent some time down in Pensacola, Florida, being part of the historic movement that was going on down there in Brownsville. And we came back, and we just didn't think it would be right to just leave. We thought we'd just come in the sanctuary and spend 10 or 15 minutes Praying for the service the next day. Man, 10 or 15 minutes turned into hours. The Spirit of the Lord moved on a young man and told him to open the doors. And he went back and he began to open the doors. And the Spirit of the Lord told him, open the doors. Because the river of revival's flowing in. You want to know what that was? It was an outpouring. It was a manifesting of the Spirit of the Lord. God has not changed. Now let's be honest with you. God didn't need the physical doors to be open. Because Jesus, when he was resurrected, didn't have to have a door or window. He just appeared. You know what I believe? I believe that was kind of a symbolic thing. That when we are ready to open the doors... When we're willing to open up our, our own heart's door, when we're willing to open up whatever we've created as barriers that prevent the flow of His Spirit, when you're willing to swing wide the door, He will come in. Oh, hallelujah. He will. He will. He will come in. Why, why am I talking about Peter? Because for you to understand what Peter had, you had to understand what it was. You had to understand what it was that made Peter different. Peter had become a follower of Jesus, but he was so up and down. The Holy Ghost made a difference. It made such a change in his life. This is what I think will happen when a Holy Ghost revival takes place. When the Holy Ghost comes, here's the first thing he'll do. He'll bring conviction. Holy Ghost conviction. Acts 3, 2 and 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. We need some pricking. We need the Holy Ghost to prick some hearts. We need the Holy Ghost to convict some people. We need the Holy Ghost to help people understand that you cannot live any old way you want to live and just keep on going by and claiming Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. There is a right way to serve Him and live for Him. And what we need is the Holy Ghost to convict again. There's a story in Amos. God had given Amos the vision of the plumb line. And he told him clearly that he's no longer going to tolerate the sin of the people. He told him Jeroboam's dynasty was going to end. And this is what he said. Amos chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. Amaziah sent orders to Amos, get out of here, you prophet. 
Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. Don't bother us with your prophecies here in Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary and the king's palace to worship. Brothers and sisters, when we ever lose the point that this sanctuary belongs to God and this place belongs to him and worship in this place belongs to God, anytime we get our worship and our thought processes displaced any other place than him, we've got problems. We may need the convicting power of the Holy Ghost to remind us who is God, who is King, who is Jesus, who is Savior. Second thing Holy Ghost revival will do, it will bring boldness. This is what you saw happen to Peter in Acts chapter 2. They were bold. Acts 4 and 31 says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they had assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. The word boldness means confidence. It is a freedom in speaking without concealment. It means fearless or assurance. We need people who can speak boldly other places than just inside your house or inside the church but can speak boldly on the street and in the grocery store. I appreciate some people in our congregation who are not afraid to pray wherever they are. Buster Ball don't care if he's in the grocery store or the drugstore. He'll lay hands on you in a heartbeat. And he don't pray soft. He prays the only way he knows how. That's with everything he's got. And the whole world knows, and that's good. The whole world needs to know. That we're praying to a God in the name of Jesus who still has power to bring help and healing and strength. Here's the third thing Holy Ghost revival will do. It'll bring power and authority. This is what Peter said to the man that day, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. I want to tell you, if, you, if you're a sinner, try to tell a crippled man to get up and walk. I always worry about saying things, worrying about people will misunderstand. People will think you're, you're, you're trying to boast or build up yourself. It has nothing to do with that. Please don't misunderstand. But I remember when Jason and Tanya's little girl kept having thrush in her mouth. And they tried everything. And they did everything. And she constantly kept thrush. And we prayed and prayed and she kept thrush. One Sunday morning, they were here. And I'm, it's one of those, it was one of those moments where what was in me was wanting to come out. And I told her, I said, now this is going to sound silly. But I want you to take this oil and I want you to rub it in her mouth. I want you to rub it on her tongue. It seemed like we even put it on the pacifier and stuck it in her mouth. I want to tell you, from the, to the best of my knowledge, the thrush went away and hadn't been back. Listen, listen, listen. It was that. It was that. It was what is in us. We need boldness and power and authority that we don't use somebody else's name. I'm not using Danny Knight's name. I'm not using Alan Durham's name. These are good men. But their name don't get very far except in their family and friends. But the name of Jesus transcends this world to the next world. It gets down to the depths and the core of every sickness and every disease. That's why Peter such as what I have. In the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Come on, give him, give him some praise this morning. Thank him for it. He said he's here to do it. He's here to give us re renewal in his spirit today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus had already said, the works that I have done, you shall do in greater works than these. It's not, not through what we do. It's through what he's already said. It's through what he wants to do. Jesus even said, I will, I will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. This is the Holy Ghost. This is what Jesus said he wanted to do. This was the plan of Jesus. His plan was when he went away, he could send another comforter, another empowerer, another one of power and authority. He could send one that would authorize you, one that, could, that you could use his name, one that you could use his gifts, one that you could use the ministerial gifts that he brings, and through that do the mighty work of God. Last thing the Holy Ghost revival will do. It will produce signs and wonders. Well, where are the signs and wonders? Well, we heard, heard one given this morning. Three-year-old was going to need heart surgery. And they go to have it done or wherever they went. And now I don't have to have it done. That's pretty wondrous to me. I mean, I know people who were told they were going to have to have a liver transplant. Hadn't had one yet, have you? They're all around us. But somehow, someway, we become detached. Somehow, someway, it does not move on us like it used to. I want to tell you, when we become the people who are the voices for the positive, and we begin to speak the miraculous works of God, and we start telling people, guess what? A man at the church was told he was going to have to have a liver transplant. But the doctor said, don't look that bad to me. It wasn't because he was misdiagnosed. It was because a holy God with power and strength got involved in the arrangement. Acts 5 and 12 and by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch well that was back then he's the same God he hadn't changed his power has not diminished one of the things that ministered to me the most when I was trying to figure out this thing of the Holy Ghost as a non-Pentecostal person was that verse of scripture that said the presence of the, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That one verse helped me more than anything else. Because if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, then the Holy Ghost is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if the power of the Lord was present to heal them then, guess what? He's here today. Oh glory to God. The same presence, the same power, the same Holy Ghost, the same one that blew down in the upper room over, over, over 2,000 years ago is the same Holy Ghost that showed up all ago and gave a message in tongues with interpretation. Oh, glory to God, He's still here to empower. He's still here to help. He's still here to convict. I think conviction is conviction is the love of a father to so do whatever he needs to do to cause you to see that what you're doing and where you're going and where you're headed is going to take you down the road you don't want to go Sometimes my parents 
We're soft and gentle. Sometimes my parents seem like the wrath of God. Do you know what they always told me? I'm doing this because I love you. Don't ever look at the conviction of God as being something that God hates. God does not hate you. God loves you enough that He'll do whatever He needs to do to cause you to see that the way you're going and the things you're doing are going to take you down a path you don't want to go. But if you'll listen to what I'm trying to tell you, if you'll listen to the gentle knock of the sweet spirit, if you'll listen to the burning down in your chest, that's my way of saying to you, you can come home. I can wipe the slate, the slate clean. I can forgive you. I can set up my throne, my, myself on the throne of your heart again. And you and I can have a relationship like I have wanted to have. But you got to come through his conviction and receive it today. I, I don't know where all this conviction stuff is coming from. It's part of my, my notes, but I, I've kind of gone way out here in left field somewhere. Whatever the Lord is saying today, I want what He wants. And if what He says we need is a Holy Ghost revival, if we need a resurgence, a renewal, a refilling of His Spirit, then that's what we need. I've asked Him to sing this little chorus. It goes like this. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me, cause yesterday's gone, today I'm in need. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Did you get what it said? Yesterday's gone. I can't do one thing about yesterday. I might have had victory yesterday. I, I might have lived right yesterday. But yesterday is gone. What we have is right now today. And the question is not what you have been, but where are you right now? If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, my question is not what have you been in power yesterday, but where are you in His power today? How is the Holy Ghost using you today? How is the Holy Ghost working in you today? When's the last time he bounced off you onto someone else? I heard the Holy Ghost say he was here so that we could have that renewal in him. I'm going to ask you to stand all over this building. We've got about four minutes before some of you are going to feel the need to, to go out the door. If you do, I understand. But right now is our moment in time. And I'm asking you as we're singing this course today, if you want a renewal, you want a resurgence, you want a refilling, you want the Holy Ghost power to be something that echoes off you into someone else, I'd really love to see you just walk to the front of this building and just offer yourself to Him. In the name of Jesus, here we go. Breathe on me. Maybe while they're coming, if you need Jesus in your life, maybe, maybe you're feeling the conviction and you just need to offer yourself to the Lord today.
fire. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love for us. We thank you, God, for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to convict us. You love us enough not to want us to, to stay in the same shape, the same plight, the same situation we were in yesterday but Lord you have so much more in vision for us God today help us to understand that you can provide what we need but you'll never force us to have it Peter could not force the man to get up he simply had to tell him to get up and the man had to do it literally the man could have stayed in his lameness had he chosen just to remain seated but Lord, he chose to accept by faith what was being offered to him. And he stood up and he began to walk. And Lord, today I'm thankful that you have reminded us through your word that this Holy Spirit is so empowering, so authorizing, so helpful, so wonderful that we need Him not just in us, but He needs to be echoing off of us, bouncing off of us. What we have, we need to be offering to others round about us. And I pray, Lord, that we'll be, we'll be very mindful, we'll be very directed in doing that. That we'll not wait on somebody else to do it for us. But we'll do it on our own. I pray today, God, that You will do it through us and in us. Help us, Lord, as we leave this place today to seek you, to do all we can to find you, and to be part of what it is that you're wanting to do in our life and in our church. Go with us, watch after us, protect us, keep us safe, be with those that are going uh, by the way of a graveyard today. Encourage them. Meet us again tonight as we gather in your name, and we'll give you honor and praise for all you do. We bless you for it in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. God bless you. Go in the power of His Spirit. So good to see Sister Izzy today.